but I'm not sure you're not getting better and better every week. Awesome. Well, good to have all of you here. Good to see some faces that have been away for a few Sundays. It's a busy summer for bikers. Uh, you've been involved in a lot of things. And various ones were maybe a little tired this morning, but if you notice somebody nodding off beside you, just be out there. <laughs> if you see someone standing up in front of you, it's because they probably sat on a mic seat for three days. And <laughs> they just don't want to sit down anymore. <laughs> We've got uh, some people that were in uh, Oregon at Joseph fr uh, Friday night. We heard from them last night they were in Glacier. And their plan tonight at 9 o'clock is to be back here. <laughs> After they tour Glacier this morning. <laughs> oh, <that's 12> hours. <laughs> so pray for them. Not only physically, but mentally. <laughs> I think they've just been off more than they could chew. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We're going to pick up where we left off a couple of weeks ago. We'll be in uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. We're going to be looking at verses uh, 26 through 29 today. So if you want to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, we'll begin reading in just a minute with verse uh, 26. Let me. Uh, Take us back to verse 25 for just a second and sort of bridge the connection uh, between that where we stopped off and uh, the verses that we'll look at today. Verse 25 says, Because of the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Now, in the verses we're going to look at today, Paul is going to seek to prove that point. And he's going to seek to prove that point by having us look at all of those that God has called and chosen then, the ones that were receiving this letter first, and all of those that God has called and chosen uh, in our own day and time. Uh, and He's calling us to look at ourselves and look at other Christians around us. And when we do that, then we're going to see the perfect example of what He said here, that the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. And so that's what we're going to uh, see from this today. So with that little bridge put in there and that connection, uh, we'll go on now with verse 26. It says, For consider your calling, brethren, that there were not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble. Here Paul gives us three things to consider. Uh, concerning uh, our calling, concerning those who have been called and those who have been chosen by God, as we said, then as well as now. He starts off by saying, not many of you that have been called and chosen by God are wise. Uh, what he's really saying there is, <laughs> not many of us <clears throat> were of extremely high intelligence. Now that might be just... <clears throat> Just a little offensive to some of you, but this is the Word of God, okay? So he says, uh, not many of us were wise. And he's talking here in terms or according to the flesh or according to the world standards is what he's talking about. The next category is, he says, not many mighty. Here he's talking about not many of those then as well as now who have been called and chosen of God to have faith in Jesus Christ, not many of us were mighty. Not many of us were very powerful. Not many of us were very influential people when God called us to Himself. Then He goes on and He says, not many noble. Here He's saying there were not many of us whom God has called and chosen that are very noble or were from the high socially elite class or were from the class of the greatest in wealth. So we see here he's talking about then proving his point when he says look at those he's called. 
Not too many wise. Not too many powerful and influential. Not too many noble, wealthy, of high social standing. What he's saying here is most of the people, now not everyone, he's saying many and most here, most of the people that God has called and because they responded to His call shows that they have been chosen so that He is called and chosen are from the human standpoint not very promising. Now I hate to tell you that. But you need to know that because it's true. And we've talked other times about the fact that people don't come to God unless they have a need. There's a realization that there's something that they can't provide for themselves. And so what we're seeing here is a, is a very clear description of most of us and most of the people in Paul's day that were called and chosen uh, to have faith uh, in Christ and come into a relationship with God. Now, Let's go on to verse 26. It, the plot thickens here. <clears throat> it says, But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to shame the things which are strong. Now, this is a very uh, interesting thing here when he talks about of the world or in the world's eyes. And we could miss the whole point here if we're not careful. And the point is simply this. He's not saying that God has chosen the weak and foolish things just only in the eyes of the world. What I'm meaning is the world might look at you and I and think we're weak and foolish. But we know we're not weak and foolish. That's not what he's saying here. He's saying He has chosen those who really are weak and foolish. It's not a misunderstanding on the part of the world as to how they look at us. We are weak and foolish. And if we were not weak and foolish, we wouldn't respond to the call. You see that? So don't just think that He's saying here that we've been misunderstood. And we're, really we are strong and and, and, and wise and powerful in knowledge and all of those kind of things. And the world has just got themselves confused as they look at us. The Word is saying, no. Those who have been called and chosen, you literally are weak and foolish. Sorry. <laughs> hey. Now, it gets worse in 28. Oh, God. Verse 28 says, And the base things of the world and the despised God has chosen. The things that are not so that He may nullify the things that are. The, the word here, the base things, in the Greek, what this is referring to is the low born. The low born is what he's talking about here. And we see it's the very opposite of what he was talking about earlier with the noble and those of high society and wealth. Okay? Here's a contrast. He's not, he didn't call the noble and those of high society and those of wealth. Instead, he called and chose those who were the low born. Those that were not so prestigious as the world sees it. Now again, this is not a hundred percent. It says many and most. But I think if most of us would look back at our lives when we were called and when we responded showing that we were chosen of God for salvation, I think you would find that in some category here, you fit in some measure. I know I do. And I think most of us here can identify with this. So he's saying the, the base things, the low born of the world. And now he says the despised he has chosen. Really this is saying those of no account. That's literally what it's meaning. It's meaning the contemptible 
in the world God has chosen. And then he says, the things that are not, that is simply talking about that which is nothing at all. So the ones that God has called and chosen are the ones that are nothing at all. They're the ones that are the lowborn. They are of no account and contemptible. Now, why did he do that? So he may nullify the things that are. So that he may take these low-born, contemptible, uh, despised, all of these other things that he uses to describe us as those who have been called and chosen. He may take those things that are nothing at all and render inoperable the things in the world that are. Everything that the world says is it's got it together. He's going to take the weak and the contemptible, the things that are nothing at all, and he's going to use them to show the world that they don't really have it. And you begin to see why it is then that God only chooses those that fall into this category. He only calls and those who have need are the only ones that are going to respond to the call and show themselves to be chosen. Now, look at verse 29. So that no man may boast before God. This is the reason for all of it right here. The reason God has chosen the lowborn, the reason He has chosen uh, those of no account, the contemptible, those that were not influential and wise and powerful and wealthy and of the socially elite class, it is so that no man, really, really in the Greek it is literally no flesh, so that no flesh may boast before God, or so that no flesh can boast in God's presence. The people that think they have something going for themselves, the people that think they've got it all together, first of all, are not going to respond to God's call. Jesus made it very clear, blessed are the poor in spirit. There's got to be a, a, an awareness of a need if we're ever going to respond to God. We can't have it all together and everything is going well and we're famous and powerful and, and influential and we've got lots of money and, and you know, your dad and your mom is Mr. and Mrs. Gosh Dang of whatever little city you're from. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Those people don't come to God. And he couldn't use those people to do what he wants to do. Because when that kind of person did something for God, it would be, look at what I did. Yeah. But when he, he chooses and brings to himself the contemptible, the of no account, the ones that were not uh, highly intelligent and wise, the ones that were not of the socially elite, wealthy group, when that person is used to do something for God, who gets the glory? God does. Because that person is just standing there scratching their head and like, did you ever see the Urkel that used to be on years ago? Did I do that? It, it becomes unbelievable to us. Because God does something through someone and through an instrument that knows they couldn't have done that themselves. And therefore, all the glory goes to God. So this is a very interesting passage of Scripture. Amen. And so we see that, that it, the way to God is humility and not pride. Uh, the way to God is a recognition of need and not self-reliance. The way to God is faith and not boasting on our own or man's accomplishments. There is neither wisdom of men nor the work of men that is going to bring us or anyone else to salvation. 
The way to God again is by grace, through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. And the whole purpose and reason that God has chosen people like He's chosen is so that no one will be able to stand in His presence and boast before Him. But that all the glory would go to Him. Amen. We got any ex-Marines here? I know we got one somewhere. Oh, come, on, come on, guys. Confess here. Yeah, we got one. The Marines have a saying. Yeah, our first one. The Marines have a saying. They're looking for a few good men. Well, our rational mind would say, well, God's probably doing the same thing. He's looking for a few good men and a few good women to follow Him and be used to bring about His desires in the world. Amen. That's where our rational mind goes wrong. Listen to this just for a second. Think about the resume that you would turn in that God wants you to have. The resume of the one that He can call and will respond ultimately showing He has chosen them. This is what would be on the resume. Not highly intelligent. Not influential and powerful. Not socially elite or of the wealthy class. Not very promising in terms of your prospects in the world. Foolish. Weak. Lowborn. Contemptible. And of no account. <laughs> now I didn't make this up. This is what the Word says. And I, I think that if you're here today and you have never given your life to Christ, you've never been born again through faith in Him, if you're here and you can identify with any or all of this, then this is good news. Because you're in a position that God can actually draw you by His Spirit unto Himself. You're in a position that, that you realize something about yourself that you might even say yes as God draws you. Because you're, you're aware of the need. You're aware of shortcomings in your life. You don't have it all figured out. You do wake up some mornings and say, oh my, what's it all about? That's the person that God is looking for. And so I would encourage you, if you have not given your life to Jesus, to think about that. Because it looks like you may qualify. Your resume may really flow to the top in this group here. We're going to give you an opportunity in a few minutes to take action on that. And I really encourage you to do that. For those of you that know you're born again through faith in Christ, and uh, you've been sort of walking around thinking, well, you know, I've been a Christian these number of years, and I, I know I wasn't worth too much to God in the beginning, but I think God's pretty fortunate to have me on His team now. <laughs> then, then just come on back down to earth here. Let's see a real picture of who you really are and who I am really am. And it will humble us. And if we're not humble, we need to be humble. Amen. Because God won't have anything to do with the proud. But He will lift up and exalt and He will use and move forward the humble. And so if you need a little tweaking there, then be tweaked today by the Word of God and get back down to earth where you need to be as a follower of Christ. And realize, I can do nothing apart from Him. But on the other side of that, is I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So, when we go out there and do something that amazes us and everybody else around, then all the glory is going to go to God. There is no flesh that is going to glory in His presence. 
And that's the only instrument that he can use. And, uh, and many of us are well aware of that. And if some as Christians are not, then this is a good, a good thing today to hear this and to, to come back to reality of, of where we are, who we are, and uh, who we are in Christ and how we should see ourselves. Now, I know that there's some of you who have been saved and, and you've never followed in water baptism. I've shared with you before, I believe, God's wanting all the people in our church who have been born again through faith in Jesus that have not followed in baptism to do that. So you're going to have an invitation or I'm extending an invitation to you today to make that commitment. Uh, be ready at 1 o'clock on the 12th to make your public proclamation to God and the world that you're of no account, you're lowborn, you're not of the socially elite class, you're not of the wealthy class, you're not powerful and influential, you're contemptible and of no account. And just get in the water and do the baptism and rejoice to the whole world of how blessed you really are. Amen. Because the most blessed people in the world are those that see their need for Jesus and they come to Jesus. So far better to have this resume than the resume of many in the world today who are depending upon themselves. They're puffed up and proud. They consider themselves better than other people. And on and on and on. Those are the people who are to be pitied the most in our world today. But you and I with the resume we have, I mean, we just need to praise God and rejoice and give thanks and know that uh, it's an awesome thing to fit into the one that God is looking for and the one that God can choose and can use. Now, we're going to also have an invitation for those of you that have any type of uh, need in your life, whether it be physical, emotional, financial, spiritual, relational, whatever way it might be. Our ministry team is going to gather up here at the front when we dismiss. And I want to encourage those of you who have not been saved to come today and let them know, I'm, I'm one of those with that resume. I'm coming to accept Jesus. They'll pray with you. They'll answer any questions you have. And, uh, and you can know Jesus today. And you can be placed from the losing team to the winning team. Because if you've read the end of the book, as it said, you know who wins. It, it may look like to the world sometimes that the Christians are losing. But as all of us know, you can lose a battle but still be the one that wins the war. Look at our nation at Pearl Harbor. That opening battle, there's nothing in the world that can be said other than we lost. But when the dust settled a few years later, we won the war. And it's the same way with God. We may, we may lose some battles, but the promise is, those of us with faith in Jesus, we're going to win the war. And we're going to be the ones on top and we're going to rule and reign with Christ throughout all eternity. Not because of something of our own, but because of the fact that we saw who He was and we saw ourselves as, as sinners before Him and we're willing to turn from that and to be born again through faith in Christ and what He has done for us, not what we can do to make ourselves acceptable unto Him. So, that's our invitation today. And when we close, I want to ask those of you that want to come for prayer for any of those other uh, parts of the invitation to come. And if uh, the ladies are busy, or uh, just wait patiently. They will finish with someone else and they will get to you and will pray with you and minister to you. Uh, this is the message today. I hope you leave here uh, feeling lifted up instead of put down because uh, that's the will of God for you to leave here lifted up with what you've heard and not put down by.
If you'd like to participate in the ministry of this church, we have our offering bucket here. Love to receive your tithes and offerings. If you could stay and eat and visit with us, we'd love to encourage you to do that. Uh, we have a good time here for the next hour, hour and a half or so. And uh, the food's good. And so we invite you to stay if you can. Forgive us for not having a ride together today. Uh, God willing, we will have something together next week. Hopefully we will not all be worn out and not so many people out of town. And I don't know, Rob told me this morning his and Sherry's bike won't be ready next week either. So there's still some bikes broken down. <laughs> Mike, Mike, Mike and Marla broke down the use the ride all the time. And, and so uh, it's been sort of a difficult year for us in that way. So bear with us on that. Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you for listening to the Word. Thank you for receiving the Word and uh, not throwing tomatoes at me or anything like that. <laughs> Greet our visitors as I know you've already done, but maybe some of you have not greeted them. Let them know that you are happy to have them here. And as we close, please remember, if there's a decision that God is leading you to make, make that decision today before you leave this place. Because uh, we could all be walking streets of gold this time next week. And uh, that's an awesome thought. God bless you. You're dismissed.